never goes there. But this room can create a temporary queen. But in the speech of all this, she didn't want to do it because she was afraid, A, they wouldn't want to be released, and B, she wouldn't want to release them. I might be the one who has a problem with this. Why? Because. You know, you're going to start getting the hate mail instead of me, so. (laughs) No, listeners will agree with me. Uh, Eventually, they all turn. (laughs) Okay, so she gives, and I really only noticed this on my third rewatch, but she gives this very you know, powerful and passionate reasons as to why she shouldn't, you want to assimilate them and how distasteful and like this poison in her mouth, like, ew, that's gross. Why would we want to do that and enslave them? Like she literally says that and I wouldn't want to let go and they wouldn't want to let go. Like the power is real, but then, oh, we're going to do it anyways. Had no choice. When you push no the wheel far enough. Had no choice. No choice. She, what no. was her next option? She literally doesn't do it until she starts seeing lights disappearing. Yeah. So she felt, whether she had a choice or not, she felt backed into a corner with no other option. It doesn't really work, by the way, because no. thousands of them get, get yeah. airlocked. But in the end, she does get the cube back. Yeah. And, and she does release them. And Elnor's reaction to that was like, are you, you going to assimilate me now? Me? Like, he was deathly afraid, but to his credit, never left the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and his cute weird. little smirk at the end, I thought that was cute. Yeah, well, and then Annika has more to do. Yes. How weird was that? Well, yes, but I liked it because it shows there's a difference between the two. Mm-hmm. See, when Seven says... I may not want to release them. She's not really talking about Seven. She's right. talking about the newly created queen right. that inhabits the body of Seven. Mm-hmm. But luckily that being realizes there's more good to be done if she doesn't continue to be the queen than if she does. Yeah. And Pat, I, every time I watched it, got the chills when the voice got distorted we are Borg. Yes. Oh my gosh. Chills and then it echoes up and the down. Chambers. Yes. That seems like a horrible, horrible, horrible idea, by the way, to echo that through the chambers, because that's what prompts her to open the airlock early. Mm-hmm. So if they didn't do that and they just came alive, more of them would have been saved, but a it's dramatic. A Borg, effect. That's what they do. Yeah. Yes. I mean. Yeah. So Seven was brilliant in this episode. Absolutely loved what she did and and I loved Elnor too the choreography of the fight scene where he's you know before seven comes yes. in was brilliant I thought so so good he could really hold his own but he got overpowered in that fight and seven shows up just in time to save him what I thought was awesome about that scene was more so than just the fighting right because that choreography was great where he gets he gets banded and he's using the the locks to take out their swords and stuff and yeah. all of that. But even more than that, at the very beginning of it, he drops the chip. And the chip comes back to play a part because then Narissa realizes it's the Fenris Rangers, and I bet you I know which one it is. Exactly. Yep. That was that was all good and and just tied into previous episodes. Really, really good. Yeah. And I love you know, when she's like, where's Hugh? What's going on with this cube? You know, and then it's like, oh, she said Hugh. And it just brought back last week's episode or two weeks ago, whenever it was when we lost Hugh. Last week. Yeah. Last week. Yeah, he dies at the end of last week, which, again, I mean, I, I, I if you listen to last week's episode, I, I loved all that stuff, except that I just didn't understand some of the choices they made when they led up to his death. Hmm. Like... Because she says kill them all and they shoot all of his XBs, but they cut away before they're done with that to make you think maybe they did kill him. And then they cut back to him later in the episode and you're like, oh, she didn't kill him. Good. And then he dies anyway in the same episode. It's like, yeah. oh, kind of a waste of a scene. Yeah. But I get why they did it. It's just kind of a waste of a scene at that point. But yeah, when she she asked about Hugh, you knew that was going to happen, right? Eventually. Mm-hmm. So get it out yeah. of the way early in the episode, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Narissa gets overrun by XBs at the end. Or by Borg. Yes. And 
she she looks like she's about to be torn to shreds, and then you just see like, see they, this is what they do that kind of drives me crazy though. They show you like the lights fly away, like she's warping out, and then they show you the slip, the ship leave. They should have cut and not showed you the ship. Leave it up to your imagination if she actually got out or not. Just just leave that little bit of hope that she didn't make it. And then show her again later. But once you show the ship, I'm like, ah, well, clearly those She's two little beams of escaped. light were her getting out. Yep. Yeah. You know, there's no there's no room for debate in it anymore. Right, right. Girardi goes on talking about how she she copes with she feels better about herself by thinking about suicide every day. That's an extremely powerful line. And with suicide rates what they are today in our culture, that line should be taken way more seriously by the person viewing than I think most people would give it credit for. I think the writing in this is so good. I mean, there was, you know, I mentioned the ghost of an answer. I just think that's so eloquent. Um, and also when Girardi says where she poured poison into my mind, like that is just such a visual description of what she had and it was forced on her. So I think that that has really been overlooked as well. Like, that is a violation. Of course it is. Yeah. She implanted memories into someone's mind that didn't want them or ask for them. Mm-hmm. And she did it simply to radicalize her to do her bidding, which she's doing. And I know you said she gets redemption because of the whole scene with Soji. But when she was talking to Picard, she would have killed Maddox again. Even going through the agony she's going through now, she would have done it again. Because she mentions to Picard, you didn't see what I saw. Yeah, but I don't think at the by the end of the episode where she's like, I will never try to kill you, Soji. I think at that point she wouldn't have killed Maddox. Maybe, but it's too late for me to care about wh- how you feel. Because after killing a best friend, you didn't feel enough remorse to never want to do it again. It wasn't until you saw the creation and how amazing it was that you changed your mind. The act itself did not... It messed you up. Don't get me wrong. You're broken and you're... You know, you mentally you can't handle it, which you shouldn't be able to. But you would have still done it again anyway. So to me, you're not redeemed. And you may not be redeemable, which is sad, but not everyone is redeemable. I know that's a message they like to put out there, but you killed a best friend and person you loved because you heard that androids may kill people one day. That I'm sorry, that's not that's not enough to forgive what you were willing to do because of it. Not for me. Oh, I think it's interesting that we see that Rafi is really trying to be sober again and three days earlier had uh, disabled alcohol and then had disabled her ability to override the disabling of alcohol. Yeah, I like that as well. And I think when, you know, it's it's a good example of when you get a focus, when you get a purpose, when you get a mission, that things are easier to conquer in your life to some degree but also speaking of someone who didn't drink for 10 years also when that mission or that purpose seems to get a little too hard you fall back into old habits and this was getting a little too hard and she tried to fall back into old habits and she wasn't allowed to um and that's so again as someone who hadn't drank for 10 years that's not necessarily a big negative that she was trying to fall back. It's just the way it is. If you're addicted to something, you're addicted to it. You can't help yourself sometimes. And you feel like at least you need that to, to exist, to exist normally and feel the way you're supposed to feel. Yeah. Right. And she felt that way. But the fact that she was unable to acquire it and was still able to function and figure out the mystery, the mystery behind why Rios reacted the way he did means she's strong enough to do this without alcohol. Mm hmm. And we didn't see her with her spider plant pen. Right, right, her weed. Yeah. yeah, And it's things that you don't need to add to the backstory of these characters, but they are adding them. They're adding a lot of these little nuances like this. And it makes them more real. I I don't care how far into the future we go. There's going to be alcoholics. There's going to be drug addicts. It's just... Yeah, addictive personalities. Correct. Some people are just addicted to things. And that doesn't make them bad people. It just means they have an issue. This is her issue, but everyone has an issue. And how does your issue affect others determines how others see that issue. But that doesn't change the fact that we all have them. Mm-hmm. We do all have them. 
Yep. I've talked about many of mine on here. <laughs> so. Anything else in your jumble of notes? No, because, I mean, we touched the fact that someone follows them into the the uh, tunnel thing. I can't remember what they call Trans it. Trans conduit warp. Sure. Those things. But someone follows them in. I, you know what drove me crazy? I went back and watched that scene three times. Yeah? Yeah, because I couldn't figure out where that second ship was coming from. All of a sudden, it was like in the bottom corner of my screen and then following it in. And I was like, where is it? Co-? And then finally, I realized after the third time on the second viewing, oh, it's cloaked. But oh. it took me three times to watch to realize it was cloaked or decloaking, you know? Huh. I didn't even care where it came from. So, it, I don't know. Yeah. It bothered me. All okay. of a sudden, there's a ship in the bottom corner. Like, So I kept watching like, all right. Our ship is coming in, our ship is coming in, our ship is coming in, our ship warps out. Why is the ship there? So I kept thinking that I was just watching our ship so intently that I wasn't seeing oh, it. Oh, right, right. But I was, that's not what happened. It wasn't in the screen. <laughs> oh, all right. For whatever reason, it drove me crazy. You like the episode? I love the episode. I know I started off sounding really negative and stuff about certain things. But again, I can suspend disbelief. Not everything has to be perfect. The fact that we have eight stars being revolved around each other, which is a mathematical impossibility. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure there actually is a specific place each one of those stars could sit. My problem is getting them to sit there would be almost impossible. Even if you had the technology, we're, we're again, suspending disbelief, that you had the technology to even lasso a star and move it. At some point, they would... Each one would have to be being moved by microns to get them in place so that they didn't destroy each other. It's just insanity. Which leads you to believe they did. Oh, that's what we didn't talk about. I love the fact that they made the call back to first contact because they said they think there's a point. Right. Then they mentioned Zephyr and Cochran. You do something, someone shows up, except this time that someone was really bad. Why? Why? Why couldn't it just have been that one guy was a jerk? Why did it have to be the whole race of them turned bad? And this is why... This is why the fact that the Romulans are controlling them drives me crazy. Because you're trying to claim that hundreds of centuries ago, the synths turned on you. So, the synths turn on Mars. We better stop it. But the synths didn't turn on Mars. The Romulans turned on Mars. The Romulans, not all, but the Tal Shiar, were just being Romulans. No kidding. So how do we know that these visions weren't another group of somebody who thought the synths were going to kill them, hacked them, made them kill a whole lot of people, and then it got out of hand because their hacking was too good? It's just... Uh, the debatable topics on it happened a hundred, hundreds of thousands of years ago, it's happening again or better if, the, if they acted alone. With all that complaining, I still really love the show and this episode... I just don't like that particular choice. That doesn't mean they haven't written everything else really well to make that point make sense. I just don't like it. And I shouldn't say I don't like it. I would prefer my way. Well, I thought that I liked last week's episode, but this one I liked actually even better. Wait, the one without Troy you liked better? I know. I know. I. Oh. All right. Look, I think Amy's been taken over by a synth. I don't <laughs> think this is real. Somebody please save me. As much as I love last week's episode, and oh boy, I watched that quite a few times as well. I really like the storytelling, how they're telling it, the music, the combination of getting questions answered when we come together and when we share our knowledge. Seven of Nine, Borg Queen, that history, the whole tie-in, and how almost everything is a tie-in to TNG, Measure of Man, First Contact. Like, it's all just so wonderful. I'm I'm really enjoying Picard, this episode specifically. And we talked for an hour and 20 minutes now. Yeah, Kevin and I went an hour and 40 oh on last God. week's episode. <laughs> oh. And that's after some fairly heavy editing. <laughs> Well, please join us on our Facebook page at UFP Earth, where we would love to hear what you think of this episode. So, Pat, where can people find you when you are not playing five different holograms? Oh, yeah, that would be me. Uh, they can find me on uh, they can find me on Twitch or Twitter under the name Magic Drop Five. It's 
No spaces, the five is a digit. 